in the communication department. Um, and I also serve in a really unique role, which is that I live in the RLCs with your students. So every um, RLC, we have eight of them here at Santa Clara University, has a faculty member who lives in the hall, um, along with a, a variety of other staff to support your students. So the presentation today is really going to cover like what makes it an RLC an RLC at Santa Clara. It's not just a typical dorm. So I'm going to go ahead and share my slides and start um, the presentation. So give me one second to maneuver that. All right. Okay. So here at Santa Clara, we call our residence communities residential learning communities. And for short, we call them the RLCs. Um, so in my role, I am the live in uh, faculty member in Cura RLC, which is housed in Finn Hall. Um, and as of last year, I also became the director of the program. So I sort of oversee all of the faculty who live in the residence halls with your students. And so just a little bit of background on me, I use she, her, hers pronouns. I've been a faculty member in the communication department since 2016. I study public health communication and that comes in handy in the residence halls because sometimes we wanna create campaigns to sort of help students understand uh, how to maintain their health and well-being. Um, I have been the live-in faculty member who we call faculty directors here at Santa Clara um, in my R. LC since 2019. So I just completed my fifth year of service. Um, and as of last year, as I mentioned, I also stepped into the role where I oversee the entire program. Um, and that's been a really fun um, and exciting role for me. So why do we do RLCs um, at, at Santa Clara? Well, you know, because I'm, I'm kind of a nerd and I am a researcher in my other hat as a faculty member, um, all of the research shows that, you know, Students who are successful in college, especially in that transition in their first year from high school, moving to a new place, being at a whole new institution without their parents most of the time, um, successful students are often connected on campus. And what we mean by that is they join clubs. They are involved in sports, whether that's club sports or just intramurals, playing with some friends, or maybe they play for one of our D1 teams. Um, they are connected through their classes, to their faculty, to their classmates. Um, they also just participate in activities and whether that's in the RLCs in the residence halls um, or not, you know, just they're engaged in the campus life. Um, the other thing that shows what makes students successful in their first year is they know how to cope with difficult situations. So they have coping strategies. So, you know, it's it's hopefully this doesn't happen to your student, but it is inevitable. Um, but maybe they get a bad grade on their first physics midterm and they're, they had never gotten a bad grade before uh, that. I mean, this definitely happened to me in college. And so having good strategies to sort of cope with these difficult things, whether it's talking to a friend, finding help from resources, that's another thing that we see as key um, to helping students succeed um, in their transition. And then the third thing is really that they use the resources that are available to them. And here at Santa Clara, we have a lot of resources, but sometimes there's so many things that students actually don't know what all of the resources are. And so making sure that students know what the resources are and, and helping them realize that they shouldn't be afraid to ask for help, that there are lots of people here on campus campus uh, in the Bronco community who do want to help them and want them to succeed. So all the research shows that these things are really important um, in a student's first year um, to helping them succeed. And so how does the RLC sort of play a role in this? And so what makes the RLC unique is it's not just this typical dorm. So I went to a really big state school uh, over 20 years ago. I went to UC Berkeley and I lived in a big dorm my first year, and I just remember my RA, the resident assistant, held a meeting with us, and he handed us each a stack of flyers about things that we should know about and just told us, I don't even remember his name because the interaction was so short, but he just said, please do not bother me unless you are hurt. And that was pretty much the extent of my interaction with someone who like worked in the dorm. Um, obviously I managed to find my own friends and figure out a community, but here at Santa Clara, we do things very differently than that. We are much more intentional with the way that we try to create a system of support for your student um, 
throughout the whole year um, and the two years if they choose to live with us for the, the two year residency requirement. So an RLC is a living community where students will share a space um, you know, with their fellow residents in that RLC, but we also carefully curate extracurricular activities as well as academic experiences for students to ensure that we're providing opportunities for them to create a network of support and to kind of get to know the folks who are here, um, who are here to support them. One thing that differentiates the RLC program at Santa Clara from other universities who have um, what they call learning communities is really this focus on the academic component of the experience. So at other universities, there are residence halls that are sort of built around a specific theme. We do have that at Santa Clara, but this faculty live in um, sort of component is what makes us unique. Not a lot of um, uh, institutions have a faculty member who lives in the residence halls. So, you know, to give you just sort of some more context about what that means is I have an apartment in Finn residence hall on the third floor and this is my home. And so my neighbors are students. You know, we also have a resident. So I'll, I'll kind of walk through who else lives in the hall, but we have a whole team of folks um, that are, you know, sort of carefully and intentionally curated to ensure that we can create a system of support for your student as they transition in their first year. So sort of why do we have RLCs at Santa Clara? I mean, it's related to our Jesuit values. So I live in Cura where our theme is Cura Personalis, but overall the vibe of the RLCs across the campus, all eight of them, is really to help students develop as whole persons. And we want to provide an environment where there's care from their fellow students, staff, and also faculty. Um, I think this idea of, you know, students are obviously here to get their degrees and learn, you know, content, academic content in the classroom, but hopefully you'll agree with me that college is also about a time, a time where students can also, you know, form into adults and they're emerging adulthood. And so our hope is that by providing this RLC experience, your students are getting a more holistic experience um, in their first and second years of college. Um, another key reason why we have the RLCs is really to create opportunities for students to develop the connections that I talked about in that first slide, which is if they're connected through participating in sports, clubs, being engaged with their faculty, um, that leads to greater learning, um, deeper connections to university, feeling more at home in this new place that they're moving to, um, and all of those things definitely connect to student success um, and student thriving. And so, you know, some of the goals we have in the RLCs is that, you know, we're trying to kind of provide our students with this enhanced integration of academic and their outside of class activities. And so we want to increase students interaction with as many people as we can in their first year, because the more people they meet and figure out who their, their core support network is going to be, um, that's going to lend it uh, them to greater success in their transition and throughout their four years here at Santa Clara. We want to connect them to different activities that they can participate in and different resources that we have on campus. And again, as I mentioned, we want to deepen their integration to the university community because Santa Clara is a very tight-knit community. Um, you know, we're considered sort of a mid-sized school. We have about 6,100 undergrads. Um, and while that can feel like big for some students who are coming from a much smaller high school, there is something about the way we do community here at Santa Clara that makes it really tight knit. And I think that is because we're really focused on this number three in the RLCs, which is we're helping students get connected to as many things on campus as possible. And when you have sort of a, a tighter network where people are connected to similar multiple things, then that leads to a much more tight knit um, and close community. And we're very proud of that here at Santa Clara. So I've listed all these amazing things that the RLCs do, but how do we actually do that? How do the RLCs function? So each of the eight RLCs has a theme. And the faculty, we have professional staff who live in the RLCs and also RRAs who we refer to as um, community facilitators or CFs here. Those are the student staff and we all create programs around the theme of each of these RLCs. 
And we offer all kinds of programs that are free to your students. So this might mean, you know, we um, host a workshop with our career center in the common room of the residence hall. And we have, um, we help students build their LinkedIn profile. Or if we're thinking about cultivating kind of like um, emotional regulation, we also partner with our counseling and psychology services office where they're one of their therapists might come and talk through, okay, you know, midterms are coming up in a couple of weeks. We know that some of you, you know, we hope that this doesn't happen, but in the case that you're really stressed out, here are some coping strategies. So we really try to bring those kinds of programs to the residence halls so that students don't have to go out seeking for them. You know, they can just hang out here and we will bring those things to them. Um, and so across the eight RLCs, we have common guidelines, like, you know, specific ways that we have to, certain programs that we have to implement to ensure that all students, regardless of which RLC they're in, um, have these different programs to help them academically, socially, and spiritually, um, and, and to help support their transition as they, uh, you know, join Santa Clara. So here, I'm just going to flash the eight RLCs and their themes up here um, on the slide. So the first four, and they're in alphabetical order, are Alpha, Cura, Sci-Fi, and Da Vinci. Um, these are the themes. I won't read them to you, and we will get um, this recording and the slide deck. Um, so, you know, if you, as long as you know which RLC your student has been assigned to, which you find out at orientation, these are kinds of the themes um, that we focus on. And so each RLC is housed in these specific buildings. And then these are the faculty directors. So the faculty directors who serve in these roles come from all kinds of departments across campus. Um, and we all sort of serve the same role, which is to help support the academic transition of your student. So here are the other four RLCs and their themes, the buildings that they're in, as well as the faculty member who will be serving in this role um, in this coming year. And so, as I mentioned, there are multiple live-in staff in each RLC to sort of create this support network um, and, you know, caring environment for your student. So there is a resident director. The resident director, actually, my resident director uh, called herself sort of like the, the property manager, the building manager. And I think that's a very apt way of describing um, the resident director. But they pretty much manage the building, the operations of the building. The key people that your students will probably really want to get to know is their community facilitator. So other schools call um, the community facilitator RAs. For us, it's CFs for short. But this is this student, they're an undergraduate student, um, and each of these CFs has sort of like a wing or a floor, depending on the shape of the building that they're in. And all of those residents, student residents who live in that wing or on that floor, they will have a person sort of assigned to them who is their CF, who they can go to as sort of like a first, I have a question about this, or do you know how I can get this? The CFs are trained to be helpful and supportive, unlike my RA when I started college. So it is very intentional um, and they come for training for two and a half weeks before the students move in. And so they are ready to support your student. We also have someone called a spirituality facilitator who comes from campus ministry. This is a graduate student to help cultivate spirituality, but I would actually say in practice, their role is much broader than that. They're just another, you know, sort of um, near peer. So someone who is a graduate student um, who can sort of offer advice and support. Um, and I know that there are many students who I've talked to who have lived in the RLCs who really deeply appreciate the spirituality facilitator. Um, new as of two years ago, we also now have therapists who live in the residence halls. Um, we have four therapists in residence who serve the eight residence halls. So each therapist in residence is assigned to two specific RLC communities. And what the therapists in residence offer are they have drop in same day therapy appointments. So if a student resident is just really struggling with something, they can log into their portal and schedule a same day appointment with their therapist and residents and just chat with someone, you know, if they really need to talk through something or if they just want to talk to someone, they don't have to have like a major problem or crisis to talk to the therapist and residents. Um, they can just do that if, if they just want someone to talk to. Our therapists and residents also hold group therapy sessions um, and 
those are meant for students who want to join a certain kind of group. So this past year, we offered groups for LGBTQ students. Um, there was a group for students in STEM, just sort of think, you know, to, a place to talk about the stressors. Um, and so each year there are groups um, that are sort of created to respond to what we're hearing um, our needs among the student population. And then there's my role, who is the faculty director, and I'll spend the next couple of slides talking more about what my role does. Um, so, you know, broadly speaking, we're here to support student academic success at Santa Clara. So we do create programs in the residence halls that are related to academics. Um, we also connect the students to uh, something called their linked courses, which we'll, I'll go into more detail in a couple of slides. We try to share on and off campus resources with the students. Um, so, you know, I, I am actually local to the area. I grew up near here and I've been here for um, eight years now. So if students are looking for something to do, that's always something I can, um, you know, sort of offer some suggestions. And I think the really um, key thing is the faculty director can meet with students one on one. So this is probably a lot of my work in the fall quarter because students come in, they have an anticipated major, you know, or they have a, a list of classes that, you know, they registered for, but then they don't know if they want to be that major now that they've taken a few classes or they really like their major, but they're like, I might want to add a minor. Um, the faculty director in the RLCs is the person that if your student doesn't know who else to go to, um, hasn't met their academic department advisor yet, or they're undeclared, they can always come to the faculty member first. Um, and if we can't answer their question or directly help them with their challenge, we know who to direct them to um, on campus to help them with their challenge. Um, and so we do things, um, so we do one-on-one -on -one advising. Um, and if we can't advise the student because their major is very specific, then we will definitely connect them to um, an advisor who can. Um, but every uh, fall and winter, we do host a program with our Drummond Center, which is our primary advising center. And we bring the Drummond Center to the residence halls. And this happens across all eight residence halls where because your student gets help with registration over the summer when they come for orientation, we have found that a lot of students in the fall kind of you know, get their registration time. And then it's like the, oh no, someone helped me with this last time. I'm not sure how to do this. And so we time our advising program to make sure that it's the week before um, your first year students will need to register. Um, and we have just an open two and a half hour session in every RLC where students can just drop in and get the help that they need to feel good about the classes they are signing up for. And we also do that in winter quarter in the first year. Um, and then by the spring quarter, they should have um, mandatory advising with one of their um academic department. So we don't do it in the spring. Um, we have a lot of students who are interested in study abroad, and sometimes it's a little bit hard to manage when those info sessions are. So every fall, we also bring an info session to all of the RLCs, um, because if students want to study abroad, typically students study abroad junior year in the fall, they actually have to apply their sophomore year in the fall. So it ha the application process happens a whole year in advance. So we just always like to let students know what that process is so that they can plan accordingly. So we have found that having the study session or the study abroad info session in the fall has been really helpful for students to start thinking about um, the application. Uh, and for sophomore students who are living in the RLCs, it's a great way to get all their questions answered. Um, we also have programs with the Career Center where in winter quarter, we bring in the Career Center to do career explorations. Um, and new this year, we're going to um, pilot some community engagement programs, which is just to help students learn about things that they can easily get to that are off campus. Um, so whether that's taking them to a nice park nearby or taking them to a local museum, just helping them take that first step of, you can take a train to this place and here's how you buy the ticket. And just having someone show them that one time, I think opens up a lot of doors for them to feel empowered uh, and capable of doing it themselves if they wanna visit that place again. 
Um, so at Santa Clara, we also have a really unique program called linked courses where, you know, all students at Santa Clara have a certain list of core requirements that they have to take. So that's like English one and two, um, a math class, a foreign language. And so some of these classes we link to the RLCs. And what we mean by that is if a class is linked to an RLC, so let's use my RLC as an example, Cura. If a class is linked to Cura, that means that all of the students in that class live in Cura as well. And so what that allows us to do is I can then coordinate with the faculty member um, who teaches that class that's linked to Cura and we'll create programs that are in the hall or one, um, last quarter, the class that was linked to mine was focused on um, food. And so we actually met at the garden that we have on campus, the Forge Garden, and we did a whole class session talking about locally grown produce and I got down and dirty and started cooking the meal with the students from with the vegetables that were harvested from the garden. And so it's really, these are considered what we call high impact practices in higher education. And so this linked course um, kind of setup is considered a high impact practice and we are um, very intent on doing that. And so um, we are, this year, it's gonna be slightly different where the linked courses won't happen until winter quarter. And that's um, because we, it's because of the FAFSA thing. So hopefully that, that, you know, we won't have that experience again next year, but every student in their first year is enrolled in at least one linked class where everyone in that linked class also lives in their RLC. And there are also just some sort of like other benefits from that where students will notice they're walking to class and someone from their dorm was also walking in that direction. And then all of a sudden the person's walking in the same building and then they realize that student is also in their class. And so we kind of do that purposefully because then again, that leads to our first goal of you're, we're helping cultivate these connections. So you're gonna see people who live in your hall as well as are in this class. And we do tell the students that they're intentionally in this class that's linked to um, their RLC. So we also teach uh, a first year seminar and sorry, I forgot to change the year here, but this will be in winter quarter. So your student's second quarter. So in each of the RLCs, um, it's the faculty director who will teach a quarter long seminar. That's sort of like, a, you know, how to, how to do college 101. Um, and so this, we piloted this last year and we'll, we're still in a pilot phase this coming year um, where it's, it's, um, voluntary like it's optional for students they can sign up for it it's two units and it is letter graded and it it will be taught either by the faculty member living in the rlcs or the resident director and it's just a great way for students to come in this sort of low stakes way and learn about how to um, access resources on campus, um, learn about different cool things we have, like a garden and a museum. And so that seminar is really bringing in a lot of resources into the RLCs so that students know what exists um, around them. And then there's also a social program. So this is not in my domain, but I did want to talk about this a little bit. But our, our uh, CFs, slash RAs at um, what they're called at other universities, also create a lot of social programs. Um, and so these are programs that help students learn how to maintain their well-being, um, learn about campus resources, connect with other students, take study breaks. Um, there are lots. So every week there's going to be at least two or three things happening in your student's RLC. And all of these are free to your student. Like they don't have to register ahead of time. They can just show up. So I think if you're you know, fall quarter or maybe later down in the year, you, you're talking to your student and they tell you that they're bored or there's nothing to do, please remind them that there are plenty of activities that we curate in the RLCs um, to ensure that, you know, they're learning about things on campus or just have a space to meet and connect with other students. And so again, just to sort of, you know, wrap up, this is my last slide because I wanted to leave plenty of time for questions. Um, our goal is really, we want to create a curated environment for students to develop, to develop connections. Um, connections with us, the staff, the faculty, connections with each other. And we want that space to be really safe um, and sort of like a nice landing place, you know, from transitioning outside of home and, and moving away from home. And so we are, 
we, we do think very hard and intentionally about how to create that kind of environment for your student, um, as well as to create the sort of programmatic kind of atmosphere as well to ensure that we are um, offering them places, spaces, and opportunities um, to meet folks um, who are here in their first year just like your own student. Um, and we we believe in this and spend a lot of time doing it because, you know, the the number one reason why students don't do well is they don't feel supported and they don't feel connected in a new place. And so we work really hard to make sure that your student knows that there are folks here who can support them. Um, and especially when their first few experiences of challenges come up, whether that's homesickness or a bad grade, or, you know, a, a breakup, whatever it is that they know that there are resources here. Um, and we just want all of our students at Santa Clara in the RLCs and beyond to thrive. And so um, we are so excited to work with your student in the RLCs. You know, please don't let uh, hesitate to let us know how we can support your student. Um, and I think that concludes my formal presentation. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing. I think Stephen's going to sort of um, open up the floor so that folks can either ask questions um, via the chat or you could just, I think he's going to allow for you to unmute um, and ask questions that way as well. Yep. So y'all should be able to unmute yourselves. I know we have a few questions in the Q&A. If Chen, you want to take a look in there. Yeah. So I'll, I'll actually look at the Q&A first. So um, the first question is for Dunn Hall. I understand that elections and politics are part of the theme. While hoping the U.S. elections will not be divisive, how does Santa Clara keep this productive and inclusive with students? So this is actually, um, I just got an invitation to join uh, a campus-wide working group to start talking about how we can create an environment that um, allows for open discussion and different points of view um, as we have a contentious election season coming up. And so we are very conscious of that and already are starting to prepare. Um, even though done, that is sort of the focus of done, um, I think we're gearing up for the entire campus, not just that RLC. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, for the RLCs, do RLCs help freshmen with acclimating? So hopefully my presentation um, helped answer that question for you. Uh, yes. So we do do, um, you know, at least in my, um, in the first year seminar, if your student uh, signs up for that, we actually have a whole unit on how to plan your schedule. Um, and the number of students who took mine last year, uh, this past year, and like tell me afterwards, like I still use the planning strategy that you shared with me. So we do have programs like that. Um, and so just incur it, we can't force the students to come, we host them. So, you know, this is why I love having a session with parents, because I know that if I tell you, um, even if your student maybe doesn't want to go, if you nudge them a little, um, maybe they will come. So um, yes, absolutely. We have programs like that. Um, and then sorry if I missed it for the linked classes that automatically assigned to students. Yes. So um, again, this year, I think we're going to try to do the linking in the fall, but because of the FAFSA sort of craze, as most parents maybe probably know that the rollout of the new FAFSA application wasn't that smooth this year, we might not be able to do the linked courses in the fall, but they will happen in the winter and they will be done automatically. So your student doesn't have to do anything um, to participate in the linked course. Um, so next question is, my daughter is a student athlete and has requested to have one of her teammates as a roommate. Is there a student athlete RLC they will be? So there are multiple RLCs that um, house athletes. So I think that is going to be worked out through uh, the athletics department and the housing department. So with the RLCs, I'm sort of more on the like the programs we create so to support your student. But typically, um, when we do have athletes, they are they are paired up with someone who is on their team. So my my guess is that that should work out for your daughter, but that will be something that I think the athletics department and the housing office sort of figure out. I don't have any um I don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> I would help you if I did. Um, okay, the next question is, my daughter is a transfer student, incoming junior, and signed up for campus housing, but has not heard anything back. 
um, is she if she ends up being placed in the university villas, is there an RLC? So the the university villas is um, for third and fourth year students. So it's technically not an RLC, but the villas does have a robust programming um, similar to what I talked about. The only thing they don't have is the faculty member, although I am talking with the resident director over there um, to maybe pilot some um, sort of academic kinds of um, programs that I can sort of assign a faculty member to go and support. So we are going to try to try that out this year. Um, so just have your, um, if she ends up in the villas, there will definitely be programs. They have social programs. They have like real life programs. I've seen things like how to file your taxes. So they do do programming over there. Uh, the programs are just slightly different because they're geared for a third and fourth year audience. So I think they've had things with like the career center, like a resume workshop. So there is that kind of programmatic support um, in the RLCs as well. Um, so Next is, I love rollout of community engagement experiences. Will there be a cost per each event or will we be billed? So in the RLCs, we do our best to have all of our programs be cost free for students. So um, usually if there is like a visit to a museum, we obviously can't do them that often and um, we can't bring everybody, but you know, not everybody signs up anyway, but if your student does want to go to one of these things and they sign up, usually we try to keep it um, no cost for the students. Um, or if there is a cost, it wouldn't be billed to you. It would be like, we'll provide the food, but you just have to buy your own train ticket, which is $10. And if it is ever a problem for a student, we will always work with the student to make sure that they can participate. The other thing that I forgot to mention, which was new, um, is that all of our arts um, and performances, so any choir performance, plays, bands, anything like that um, is all free for students as well. So sometimes we'll also coordinate an outing like that. And maybe we can do something where we get the director of the play to then meet with the students afterwards. So those are other ways that we do these community engagement experiences to try to keep costs um, down. Um, the next question is, are commuter students a part of RLCs? Yes, they are. So any incoming first year student who is a commuter um, will be assigned to an RLC and your commuter student will have access to the programs. Every RLC sends out a weekly newsletter that talks about all the programs going on um, and your student should be given access to the common areas of the residence hall that houses the RLC that they're in, um, and they should be able to attend any of the programs um, that are being offered in that RLC. And I think that was my last question in the Q&A. Are there any other questions that folks would just like to ask, or if you want, you can continue to type into the Q&A. Um, are there religious practices uh, or faith-based uh, events, opportunities incorporated across the RLCs? So yes. So um, in every RLC, the spirituality facilitator is closely linked to campus ministry. And so I know that um, in some of the RLCs, the spirituality facilitator will court, like in mine, in Cura, um, she basically coordinates a walk over to Sunday mass um, with to go to the student mass with students. Um, and then every RLC also has a student who is usually one of the CFs or RAs who is a liaison for campus ministry. So that student is sort of responsible for promoting other events um, that are being put on by campus ministry, whether they're multi-faith events or uh, events going um on at the church. So there, there is a concerted effort to connect students um, who want to engage in um, any of the events that are being put on at the church or by our sort of multi-faith team here on campus. Um, the next question is, can you switch an RLC if you feel like you don't fit in the first year? Yes. So you don't, you aren't stuck in the RLC for both years. So if after the first year, um, you know, there's sort of like maybe a better fit somewhere else, it is absolutely okay to move. Um, we do find that I think students are um, like staying in the same RLC. Most students have a good experience um, and will um, sort of stay there. 
And then are there any webinars for students during this summer? Um, oh, sorry, someone asked me if I could repeat. Okay, let me um, finish answering this question and I'll go look at, uh, okay, so someone wanted me to repeat the answer to the question about the commuters. So all first year students will be, commuter students will be assigned to an RLC um, and they should get added to the mailing list of that RLC. And so they'll get a newsletter each week with all of the events that are happening in that RLC. And they should also have access um, to um, the common areas of the building that their RLC is housed in. Um, and then webinars for students during the summer, especially students who are not in orientation until September. I'm not sure, Stephen, because I know that this webinar series is mostly for parents, but I think students are welcome to join any of these if they want to. But Stephen, maybe you have an answer for this, whether or not there are webinars for students. I do, and I was just finishing a typed response, but there is a uh, students are, are invited to join alongside you all for these parent webinars. However, there are student specific ones that our orientation leaders are hosting. Um, they do it through a platform called Bronco Exchange, where it kind of connects all of the students together. Um, last Wednesday, they sent out a newsletter to all of their SCU email addresses and potentially even their um, email address that they use to apply to Santa Clara. In that newsletter were specific links to a variety of uh, webinars that are happening, but they are pretty much weekly um, when we're not in session. So typically Wednesdays or in the evening, um, there are Bronco Exchange webinar events. Thank you, Stephen. Didn't know the answer to that one. <laughs> and then the next question is, I know RLCs have first and second year students in them. Do the classes interact much or is it mostly first years engaging? It's pretty mixed in the RLCs. I mean, all of the, we don't really create programs that are like specifically for first years, except for the first year seminar program. But even this past year, we allowed a couple of second years to take it because it wasn't offered their first year because it was a new program. Um, and so, yeah, the students do mix. I find that students make friends with first and second years. They make friends with some of our CFs who are upperclassmen. So it's pretty mixed. Uh, it's definitely not siloed. Like first years are only friends with first years and second years are only friends with second years. Um, it kind of goes back to, you know, even though we're 6,200 students, like it's a pretty tight near knit community. Um, and so I think we um, are able to like intermingle um, quite a bit because of that. And then I think that are the re that was the last remaining question. Any other questions that anybody has? 